to um, thank uh, Naresh and Amir uh, for allowing me to give this presentation from a distance today, and I'm, I regret I couldn't be there in person. Um, we're very happy to uh, have been working on these warm season grasses for the past 30 years at REAP Canada, and we got interested in these grasses because we were looking for new ways to find new biomaterials and new energy sources from farms. And the beauty of the, the native prairie grasses is that they, um, they're, they're, they're systems of benign design and management. They just grow a lot of biomass with very little input, and they're really good because they improve soil fertility. So these native grasses with their root systems are unsurpassed in terms of um, a way to improve soil um, aggregate stability and soil carbon. So the title of my presentation today is on these uh, genetically improving these warm season grasses for improving yield and quality. So that the grasses are easier to grow for farmers. And we started this, uh, the field research in 1992, developing improved biomass cultivars of switchgrass and big blue stem. That's the big blue stem on the left and the switchgrass on the right at the end of the season. And um, the, the, the nice thing about these grasses, they're adapted to less than best farmlands, and that helps reduce the competition for land. So when farm commodity prices are high, like today, um, farmers are looking not to grow these crops on their best quality lands, but on their less than best lands. And that's what we bred them for, was for less than best lands. And we've tried to make them easier to grow and faster to establish, and of course, higher yielding. And we try to widen the maturity range so that we can do both fall and spring harvest systems. I'll try to explain that a little bit um, more if you're not familiar with that. So when we started in the early 1990s, we put in like 500 acres of these grasses at the beginning, and we had some pretty messy fields. And so they weren't very farmer friendly. They were slow to establish. And so we, what we looked at was how best can we turn this into a field crop? Because really it was a, an unimproved native grass. And it was obvious that the crop required domestication. So what we did is we worked intensively in, in selection for seedling vigor. Um, most of this work we did in the greenhouse and we went to one year breeding cycles. So we would start with, for example, 30,000 seeds in, in um, a thousand of these cells, and we would eventually come down to, to 200 that we would bring to a breeding nursery. So the, the tray in front of me is uh, our improved selections, and you can see how they're all single tiller. So rather than emerging with multiple tillers, we wanted to just have um, a single tiller emergence so we could get up and out of the weeds quite quickly. And so we, we, we just continue to work on this. And if you, if you look at the very far left, those were the native grasses that we pulled out of an old 2006 field of Cave and Rock switchgrass. And that field was about eight or nine years old. And what we did is we did improved um, selection uh, in the greenhouse and in, in the field using our, our visual selection methods for, um, based on plant morphology. And you can see in the center picture how nice and uniform looking that row is. That's really looking like a row, like a field crop now. But on the far left, it's a very disorganized canopy. And we, we selected for a more erect growth habit with fewer tillers. And on the far right, you can see that's um, a pretty, pretty nice looking selection. And that's got very little um, side growth. It's all reproductive growth and very erect. So we've made major, we've really transformed it from a, uh, a wild species to a domesticated species over the past uh, 15 years of breeding. And then we, we changed what the plant looked like. Before the plant used to come out and it had these floppy leaves. And it just wasn't a crop, crop looking plant. It was, a, it was a, a wild looking plant. And we selected for what we, what we call like a new ideotype. And we were selecting for increased height, reduced tillers, um, wider, more erect leaves, wider maturity, and glaucous bloom, which is like a blue-green color from, uh, from the wax. And really what we did is we looked at um, lowland switchgrass and we looked at miscanthus, and we saw the, the great traits that those plants had for improving um, photosynthesis 
and we basically copied it and integrated it into upland switchgrass. Upland switchgrass is really hardy and it has no major agronomic problems, but it just wasn't as high yielding. So we've turned it into a, a more um, resource efficient plant that's, that's capable of producing more biomass now. And we've, we've put these out on sites. We have um, sites in Quebec and Ontario that we, we, we originally started working with, and we've made major gains in productivity and ease of establishment um, just through visual selection and using a lot of plants in the selection process. So like I said, we start with 30,000 seeds. We end up with 200 plants, and we repeat that every year or every other year. And so now we've made up to eight selection cycles on some of these materials. And what we've ended up developing is, is materials that are short season and long season. So for the very on the very far right is the is what we call the RC Big Rock. And it's about 155 days to maturity. And the far left is what we call the RC Blue Jacket. It's 130 days to maturity. So the materials on the left side would be more suitable for northern zones or for fall cutting and, and fall harvest. And the ones on the right would be more conducive to late fall harvest, late fall cutting and spring over spring harvest. So we overwinter the crop. And so this, this is gives us a, more of a portfolio of materials for the various regions in, in North America, in the, um, in the upper corn belt and in the central corn belt. And in Ontario, for example, it's mainly the, the, the ones on the, on the, the Tecumseh, Sundance, Chippewa, and Big Rock would be adapted, and Blue Jacket would be more adapted to, for example, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota. So these are some of our materials in the in field sites in the U.S. and Canada. This is actually in Illinois, about two or three hours south of Chicago, and our materials are the um, the the second and fourth one in in the in this trial, and then there's some lowland switchgrasses there as well uh, which are, are more blue and we've we've tried to develop our grasses so they're blue green and we find that works pretty well in northern environments and we've really focused on the seedling vigor and this is a trial at bishop's university near sherbrooke quebec these these this is this trial is at 12 weeks old this photo and so cave and rock is the material that most farmers would have grown in ontario for example like five years ago. And now we have these new selections like RC Big Rock that are much more vigorous in, in their seedling vigor. And all of our materials now have like substantially better seedling vigor than the older materials that are that we're looking to phase out. Like like cave and rock. And then in terms of agronomic improvement, what we've seen is these no till seedings. You can have like a 15 foot no till drill. You can have a bigger uh, air seeder like this one and we've seen that we're getting superior stands so we put on pre-emergent herbicides and and we um we no-till and we've getting we're getting much more uh reliable establishment compared to the photos i saw I sent you at the beginning showed you at the beginning so for example these are three of our uh, key uh seed growers in in eastern canada don knott in clinton ontario uh normal caron in quebec and Ron Tunders in Eastern Ontario and near Williamsburg. And they're each, they've each been licensed these materials. And you can see these are first year seedings and they're just excellent. Uh, very, very, very good seedling vigor. Um, some of them would be getting up to two ton per acre in the, in the seeding year. So the, the whole notion of slow to establish switchgrass, you gotta wait a couple of years to get income. That's, that's historically the case with the unimproved materials. But these, these are growing like field crops now. So this is um, Don and his son Dan Knott are growing, uh, are upscaling quite a bit of switchgrass for seed production now. They would have about 300 acres in seed production. And this is a new 150 acre field of, of um, an improved um, selection from Cave and Rock called RC Big Rock. And we're trying to get the material now so it's um, two feet tall in two months. And this is a photo at six weeks and it's about knee high already. So we've we've really um, found ways to to get much more reliable establishment on these grasses. And the other the other benchmark we're creating is just like in in corn in Ontario they talk about 
the crop being uh, knee high by the 1st of July. That's the old adage. And what we, we've set as a goal, uh, as our benchmark for switchgrass is to get it nose high by the 1st of July. And this is a picture from this summer of one of our improved selections. And, you know, and, and you know, we're, 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 we're exceeding that goal. So just excellent response to plant breeding these crops are providing us and uh, making it a lot easier for farmers to grow the crop. This is a picture from Don Knott from uh, last summer, uh, actually July 2020. And just, just a real robust looking crop, uh, really doing well here. And we can use this for fiber feed and straw markets and at the same time improve soils. So just, just a real nice uh, looking stand, uh, really productive and um, easy, easy to get count on that it's gonna give you income. So we talked earlier about this, this fall mowing and spring baling. This is what it is. We, we set up our windrows in the fall. And then if you look at the bottom right, it's left in the windrow over winter. And then we'd come in and bale it in the spring. So the advantage of this is that the nutrients are leached out and it's dead dry to harvest in the spring because we've got really good drying conditions. <clears throat> the other system we've, we've, we're working at more and more is fall harvesting. So what we did is we, instead of growing real late season materials, we can grow earlier maturing materials. And as long as they le reach physiological maturity, these upland switchgrasses are really hardy. So if we can reach m physiological maturity about the third week of September, you can see the material up the slope a little bit, it's starting to yellow. That's an indication that it's reaching uh, physiological maturity. And, and we can cut this and it won't regrow. And we've got pretty good, pretty decent drying conditions at the end of September to harvest this material and potentially get higher yields than if we overwinter the material in spring harvest. So some of the exciting things that we've we've been able to do now is is get these new intro, introduce these new materials into the uh, commercial market. And in 2020, we we were selling in in North America. And in spring 2021, we started our first um, seed exports to Europe. So we've got these ones here arriving um, in France, and they're primarily used for livestock uh, applications and also for habitat for hunters. So um, uh, it's providing conservation applications as well as farm farm applications. And this 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 fall, we're we're getting some excellent excellent harvests. You can see just on the left there, there's just a sea of seed on that field, sea, sea of seed at uh, Don Knotts, and we're getting like excellent harvests. And we're going to have a lot of material available for sale this uh, this fall and winter. So we we're really pleased that the farmers are are picking up on this. We've got outstanding seed growers. Most of our seed production presently is in Ontario. Ontario's got ideal conditions for growing high quality switchgrass seed. We've got excellent farmers in Ontario with good infrastructure. And um, we, we hope this is a major export crop for leading switchgrass uh, seed producers in the province. And um, today's a great KTT event around soil carbon sequestering with these warm season grasses. But in the past, we've also been involved in projects um, just improving switchgrass agronomy and how to use the materials. And these are a couple of guides that are on the Ontario Biomass uh, website. Um, comprehensive Guide to Switchgrass Management. There's another one on livestock and poultry bedding applications. And there's another one on horticultural and um, uh, field, uh, sorry, um, straw mulch applications for, um, for these grasses. So th there's a diversity of ways we can use them. Everything from pulp and paper to um, to livestock feeding to to bedding, and uh, a great soil improving crop. So we'd like to thank our research partners in our warm season grass plant improvement. In Ontario, our key partners are the uh, Ontario Biomass Producers Cooperative, uh, Ontario Ministry of Agriculture and Food, and the University of Guelph. And um, we have we have testing um, across across Canada in. Uh, in Nova Scotia and in uh, Quebec. And then um, in the US, we have performance trials in Illinois, Iowa State, South Dakota State, 
and the University of Nebraska. So um, if you have any questions, you can um, you can just send me an email or you can ask some of the farmers of the meeting to answer it because we've got a lot of informed farmers on switchgrass production in the province and uh, hope to see you on another day in person. Thanks so much for uh, for following the presentation.